Welcome to the Fantasy 40 Podcast with your host, John Davari. I mean, I can beat the shit out of Hollywood Brown if you'd like. Matt Walker. Put the DK Metcalf of running back. And Andrew Burke. I love Hakeem Butler, actually. I'm sorry. He's starting to grow on me. Remember to like, rate, subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify. Follow the guys on Twitter at the Fantasy 40. Enjoy the show. We are back. The fantasy apparently 26 and two thirds rides again. I know you've all missed us. We've missed you. But now it's rookie draft season. We are back in full force, ready to tell you who to draft and who not to draft this dynasty rookie season. As stated, we're missing a member of our three musketeers and coach Burke 82 is somewhere in the great Northwest again, uh, doing unspeakable things to coworkers and the like. But I have John DeBar here with me today. How you doing, John? Uh, not, not good. I don't like, I don't like this draft class as much as I thought I did. I like the top and then boy, does it fall off a fucking cliff. John is quickly, quickly stealing my FF cold water moniker, uh, from me in this. I happen to like this draft class. Um, I think even your opinion will change a little bit after we get a little combine love, uh, from some of these guys, because truth be told, I do not watch college football. Um, I don't have skin in the college game. Temple university was not a beacon of, uh, football glory during my time there. So I haven't really, uh, I don't, I don't really spend my, many of my Saturdays um, on college football. I, I wait until this point. I quickly evaluate them, and then I let this draft process kind of point me in the right direction. So a lot of these guys are newer to me. I'm not going to come with a, a Debbie mindset, but from my uh, surface-level scouting, there's a few guys that um, I have my eye on. So as stated, we're going to get into the 2020 rookie class. Position by position, John and I – did a kind of quick pre-combine ranking um, of the offensive skill positions. This is clearly subject to change. And based upon our 2019 rankings, there were some yes. monumental changes um, that took place as we did pre-combine, post-combine, and then post-NFL draft. And before we get in this class, the one that stuck out to me, John, because I look back at that last year was, do you remember who your running back won? was pre-NFL Combine last oh, year. No, but I, I the one speaking of risers and fallers, I know Elijah Holyfield fell like 45 spots after the uh, Combine for me. Listen, that was a true knockout punch in <laughs> Daddy Evander fashion. It's, he will never recover um, from that Combine. But you're running oh, back Oh, Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary. And I fucking chickened out and didn't did? stick to my guns. And I could have had him in a lot more spots and I didn't get him. And he yeah, looked good. I mean, he fell rightfully so, measured in quite quite little and didn't run particularly well, if I recall correctly. But the reason you had the reason you had him there pre-combine is because of what you saw in film, and that's what translated to the NFL. So you're right. If you would have Stuck to your guns, you would have been heavy Devin Singletary. But um, that was the one I looked over. I said, "Whoa, Devin Singletary at the running back one. Let's uh, let's see who uh, has an epic fall from grace this year because there will inevitably be some. But um, we're going to start with the quarterbacks. There's not a lot to talk about. I mean, outside of Superflex, I don't truly believe there's there's more than three quarterbacks in this class of any significance. Um, personally, there's some upside guys, super flex, you know, clearly adds a, a little bit more to the table, but why don't you talk about your QB one at present and why the fuck you have there? <laughs> I, I enjoyed the, the giggle leading off. Um, so we were on the off the rails podcast, uh, earlier in the week and I had mentioned me being terrified of, uh, I usually avoid guys that I think can miss totally. So I'm more risk adverse. I don't really like swinging for the fences. So uh, real quick, Joe Burrow's kind of the number one for, for real football and looking like fantasy, uh, especially in Superflex. I 
am not sold on him. I think he may, was a product of the system at LSU. Assuming he's going to the Bengals, I don't love his weapons there. I hate that coaching staff. I think he ends up in a bad situation, and I don't like it for his uh, long-term fantasy production uh, upside. So Burrow is not my number one. Uh, Tua is also <laughs> not my number one quarterback because he has a pretty significant injury history. And the last one is a fucking broken hip. And in case you are unaware, if you do that when you're in your senior years, it can lead to death. So injury, even though he's 22, I think, and, uh, you know, a, a high level athlete, his injury history scares the shit out of me. Uh, and there's a good chance he falls to the Dolphins at six, and I don't love that either. So by default, uh, and I don't think Justin Herbert is all that great. So by default, I've taken the only other quarterback who is predicted by many to be a first-round pick, and it's Jordan Love, who I also (laughs) don't love. He's just there because I don't like the other guys. I I think this is a pretty – terrible uh quarterback class so jordan love is the uh little piece of corn on top of this pile of poop (sighs) what a visual um i mean obviously his name is jordan love so by default i guess you just love jordan but what about this utah state product because other people said he's a first round pick i mean I I didn't say it. I I see project. Well, you, you know, I mean, in the, the, like you said, these rankings change dramatically, especially for us between the combine and, and the actual draft. This is based on the pro- projections that he is going to be a first round pick because he's probably going to get on the field earlier than you would assume. If he falls out of the first, he is absolutely going to come tumbling down my board here. All right. Um, to- totally unrelated, by the way, just to throw this out there. Uh, who's the Georgia kid? Jake Fromm. Mm-hmm. Have you seen his mother? Yes, she has made her rounds around the internet. Yeah, she is. Jesus, she's a delightful woman. God. Um, <laughs> I-, I was surprised you didn't have him as quarterback one, just off of that piece of He's- information. Since you're he- obviously he goes in the <laughs> he goes in the first. Uh, 60 picks, I'll, I'll bump him up to two, just based on that. Yeah, I mean, you just want him to see, right? Yeah. yeah, obviously. Um, well, Jordan loves my QB5, which is, I think, an apt placement um, for him at present. You trashed just about every quarterback that I had listed above him. Joe Barrow is my one right now. Joe Barrow is going to go one-on-one. He's going to go to Cincinnati. Might force a trade out of Cincinnati. I mean, there's some rumblings about that. Uh, we'll be yeah. Old, we'll be old Eli. Might not necessarily be a bad thing, but truth be told, I like Cincinnati. I like their weapons. I think that, I mean, I don't you know, reserve judgment on the coach. You know, he had a bad first year, but just about everything went wrong there. But if they get A.J. Green back and they have Tyler Boyd there and there's John Ross and they can have any semblance of a tight end position because I don't think they'll go back to Eifert again. Then they have Mixon, who is one of my favorites oh, boy. at the position. I, Joe, Joe Barrow's walking into weapons. They just need to fix that offensive line, which was ravaged by injuries. I truthfully believe a Joe, Joe Barrow-led Bengals offense is a 500 team next year. I do. I, I, I don't think they're as bad as they were last year. Um, get a little you know, luck on the injury side. And he could guide them to a 500 season in his first year. I, I, I like Barrow. I, I don't think he was a product of LSU last year. I mean, he had a an interesting story in his history, but I'm just not giving Joe Brady all the credit for what Joe Barrow did on the field um, in dominating national, you know, the college football landscape last year. So he's stuck in my one until further knows. Tua is two for me. If Tua was injury free, he would be by far. My QB one in this class. I agree. He has so much talent. Um, he's versatile. You know, he he brings the athleticism as well that I really like. Um, the injury factor alone is what drops him to two. Um, can't go any further on him just on upside alone. You know, if if he can, 
you know, modern technology has made some of these injuries <laughs> less damning than they were in, in years past. And I know this is a pretty significant injury and the hip's not his only thing. He had like a bad ankle injury. And I think he's had something else too. Um, yeah. I think he had a hammy or a quad or something. I mean, it's a soft tissue thing. So yeah, just not yeah. the best. Um, but he's sitting there too for me. Justin Herbert, Oregon is three. Cause I think he'll be the third quarterback taken. And then I actually have Jalen hurts at four. Um, I don't love Jalen Hurts, <laughs> and uh, he was he was exposed to competition when when it came um, to the championship games. But just what he brings with his legs, if he falls into a situation and gets opportunity, he's going to be great from a fantasy perspective. He might not be the best NFL quarterback. I do agree. We with don't that. care about how good they are as NFL quarterbacks. <laughs> Jalen Hurts' athleticism alone has him as above Jordan Love for me because he just has more upside than Jordan. So I've got does. I've got two landing spots for you that I've heard speculated on the radio. So none of these thoughts are my own. But what do you think of him on the Bears? Uh I mean I yeah, I I I would like that. They have weapons and I don't like Mitch Trubisky and I do like their coaching staff. I think they've been limited by Trubisky. So that's probably a place where he could challenge maybe not and then right the, the gate, but the other landing spot i've heard based on skill set and the offense the team runs baltimore ravens yeah i mean that blocks him yeah i, I wouldn't yeah. be he, he would he would disappear from my rankings there i mean you know i'm not going to predict a lamar jackson injury and that aside hurts isn't going to take lamar jackson's job but i do get where you're going i mean the same reason rg3 is there is that they they don't have to install an entire new offense if, God forbid, something happens to Lamar Jackson. So that makes sense. Um, there's a lot of running quarterbacks in this league nowadays. I mean, put Jalen Hurts behind <laughs> Russell Wilson. You know, he's not going to play, but he'll learn. And yeah. if, God forbid, something happens there, that would be a tremendous opportunity. There's so many spots that, as a pure backup, I think would be good for him. I'd want him to go somewhere where there's, you know, maybe, you know, opportunity. You know, and you know, is uh, Tampa Bay a place? Does he go to the Chargers potentially? And they hold, you know, use Tyrod Taylor as a placeholder if they don't land one of these top quarterbacks, and you know, in the first round. I think there's a few other spots where it's a clear path to opportunity for him, and I'd be interested to see what he could do with it. I got one more question before we move on to running backs. So we both have uh, Jacob Eason, number seven in our quarterback rankings. He has actually been mocked in the first round at a bunch of places. Obviously, which team it is makes a difference. But just in a vacuum, if he goes in the first round, how high would you be willing to move him up in your rankings? I don't know that I'd move him much further. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think uh, the five is yeah, he's, he, he, five. He, yeah, he could jump from. Um, but I wasn't crazy about Eason. Me um, neither. He had a decent season in Washington, you know, after, you know, transferring out of uh, Georgia, but Georgia. it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't strike me as a uh, must have uh dynasty quarterback, you know, even, even in super flex. I mean, if he goes in the first round, sure. His value goes up because then you're just expecting opportunity and maybe he's a QB two for you, but no, I, I wasn't impressed uh, with Eason overall. So yeah, maybe jumps from, but He's not doing, not doing much else. Uh, he doesn't bring anything with his legs. So, you know, or how many, you know, do we still want pocket passers, you know, in fantasy football these days? I mean, depends on the system. If you get answers, not no. that he is this guy, but You're if not. he's the next <laughs> Drew Brees, I mean, yes. Yeah, I mean, sure. Tell me who the next Drew Brees is in this class, and I'll I'll sign up. No, but it's no one. Drew Brees, no Drew one Brees here. wasn't even Drew Brees out of the gate. So you know that that took time. So we just patience isn't something I subscribe to in fantasy these days. And knowing that that guy will take time just to be anything, you know, but a middle of the road starter, nah, doesn't do it for me. I'd I'd rather have Jordan Love landing spot agnostic, like just better upside. There's a lot of J's in this class. You realize that? There's Joe, Justin, Jalen, Jordan, Jake, and Jacob. That's literally, you know, six of my top seven are J's. And, so. and they're junk. Yeah, junk, junk is what junk. they all are. What I'm, what I'm <laughs> suggesting is, you know, parents, if you, you have a son, you know, they, you know look in the J's because apparently that's a, uh opportunity for success. And they, your kid could be a professional quarterback. But as tough. <laughs> 
a bad quarterback for far too long already. Um, yes. Well, because we don't like him. Yeah. This is a, this is a hater program. What we do. Makes sense. Yeah. It was easier to do that. So we're going to now pivot to the running back position at this point in time. And again, all subject to change. Truth be told, my, uh, my running back one has changed this week um, for me as I – look a little bit more into things as I listen to more uh, other programs as some of the people that I follow on Twitter, you know, are putting out more content. This is what I do at this time of year is try and soak up uh, as many opinions as I can, you know, dive into whatever information people are putting out there and allow me to formulate an opinion. So my running back one was DeAndre Swift, who is your running back one. And I definitely don't begrudge you for that. I do like DeAndre Swift, but he has been bumped to my running back two in favor of none other than Jonathan Taylor um, out of Wisconsin. Jonathan Taylor is your running back four, John. So I would like you to speak about why you clearly don't like Jonathan Taylor. Oh, you know, you know the answer. <laughs> then I will try to uh, speak as to why I've come around on him. Uh, I, I actually like him a lot. I've heard some interviews of his. I, I, I wish him nothing but the best. And it's not like he's, you know, 10th, he's four. He's that's just fine. Uh, it's not, you'll own him nowhere. He is, <laughs> I just don't trust Wisconsin running backs. That's that's my thing, and that's gonna be my thing. So, I depending where he lands, he could move up a little bit, but I he's got a massive workload in college. Uh, what thousand carries in three years or something nuts like that. Uh, and I, I don't. The Wisconsin running backs have burned many a people. I am not someone who's going to uh, take the risk. Is nine hundred twenty-six carries oh in three years, two ninety-nine right out of the gate as a nineteen-year-old at Wisconsin. Um, he, do you, yeah, he I, said on the radio he's hoping to get into the four threes. Which, if he runs a four three at his size, uh, he's going to rocket up people's boards. Yes, and this kid as I've come to find out as a track was a high school track star yes, in the yes. hundred meter. Um, I didn't, I mean, you see him running away from people on tape, um, but I wouldn't have put that speed on him. And I don't believe he will run into four threes either as a, I mean, even a four, even if it goes four five. That's it's fine. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Sign me up. I mean, five eleven two fourteen is what they have him listed as. And, and I agree. I, I, I had to take the logo off the helmet here, John, because we all hate Wisconsin running back here <laughs> at the 40. It's just, it's a bias that's largely um, hit for us. You know, Melvin Gordon had a cup of tea, you know, as a RB1, but I think those days are done for him. And then James White has hung around for forever as a PPR back. But, you know, we can speak to the litany of dead running back carcasses, you know, that have disappointed out of the University of Wisconsin. And, you know, they have a tremendous, uh, you know, offensive line, they're always ranked highly, you know, as far as run blocking is concerned. And that certainly helps someone like Jonathan Taylor as opposed to someone like Cam Akers, who had a dog shit line at Florida State. But I don't know. It's he, Taylor, no significant injury history, was able to handle the load right out of the gate at Wisconsin. Like all three seasons at 300 carries. He's top 2,000 yards, two to three seasons. His rookie, his freshman season, just shy at 1977. You know, splashes the end zone constantly and finally got involved in the passing game had 26 receptions um in his junior year so saw a little bit from him as a receiver that you usually don't get from wisconsin backs you know of his ilk in college i mean he only had eight receptions his freshman and sophomore year but saw a little bit more diversity from him and the ability to catch now he's not going to get split out wide and run routes but you know let me know that you can get 30 or 40 receptions in a season and add that on to the fact that you're going to be carrying the ball 300 times as a bell cow. I am interested. Um, and where I've tried to change my perception of running backs is I don't care about your second contract. I yeah. need to get guys that I think are most likely to produce right out of the gate <laughs> and be quote unquote, the surest thing possible. Um, I, I don't need to worry about is this guy going to be playing when he's 30 years old? You know, that is a poor, that's poor form, poor process. Um, and I think Jonathan Taylor, where he lands that team, he's walking into the bell cow role right away. I don't care 
what team drafts him. There's literally only like five places where I would say, okay, I was wrong about that. Anywhere else, if they're spending draft capital on this guy, which is likely round two at the latest, he is touching the ball 20 times in week one. Yeah, I don't don't disagree. The volume should be there. You know, so he has jumped Swift for me, but Swift is still two, you know, and he's your one, you know, so I don't think there's, we need to discuss DeAndre Swift much. I mean, this kid came out as a freshman and was was stealing work from Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb in that Bulldogs backfield, and he hasn't absorbed the pounding that Jonathan Taylor has over the years, but, you know, he's been productive, you know, whether it's running the ball or, or receiving, and he's a little bit more diverse um, as a pass catcher, which is why I liked him the most. Um, initially, but you know, falling to number two for me, as I don't think is a, is a huge indictment on him. But um, what I do want to get to is your running back two, my running back three, Cam Akers. When you talk a little bit about Cam Akers, yeah, I I've the one Debbie league I play in. I think I got him as a freshman, so he's just been sitting on my little Debbie spot for a couple of years now. So he's somebody that I'm probably higher than I should be, just because I've paid closer attention to him than uh, a lot of other guys. But he, I, I think he's just been a victim of being on horrific Florida State teams, bad offensive line, bad offense in general. And he's he's played as well as anybody could expect him to play, given the uh, <laughs> terrible hand he was dealt there. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing him at the Combine, see what he does, because I, I have a personal interest in him, like I said. But uh, I, there's, there's no... Nothing that, you know, looking for the the negatives, there's nothing here that really scares me off of him. I'm just a little higher on him than consensus, but I I, I, I think he's a very safe pick. You're going to probably hear me say that word quite a bit. Yeah, John likes safety. You know, he, he was a crossing guard, a hall monitor in the past life. In the beginning, these early guys, I like safe towards the end. Swing yeah, defense. I mean, I'm, like I said, I, Cam Akers, you don't have to look far down my rankings to find him. He's, he's running back three for me. I love Cam Akers. Um, yeah, he's anywhere else, you know, Cam Akers could be vying, you know, for the top spot. And, and I think he'll do well at the combine. He's not going to hurt his cause when he's there, um, in, in my opinion. And he's another guy that straight out of the gate is a freshman at Florida State. Thousand yards, seven touchdowns, sixteen receptions, another hundred and sixteen yards and a touchdown. I mean, eleven hundred and forty-one yards and eight touchdowns um, as a freshman uh, at Florida State. He he didn't have the the luxury the the following year and even this this past year you know, of being on a quote unquote good team, but still productive and just this the, he he is the epitome of a tape guy for me because you put on you do Google Cam Akers, YouTube Cam Akers, yeah. do anything Cam Akers. You're going to be like, wow, I love this guy. You know, he makes something out of nothing, you know, constantly. And imagine him in a good offense, a team that can scheme appropriately. Cam Akers has just as much upside as any other running back in this draft, in my opinion. Could, couldn't have said it better. You are correct. Thank you. Um, yeah. our, our top five is the same, just in a different order. They are, but I think that which you know, is they, probably going to be the same for everybody, honestly. Yeah, there's. I mean, most people I see, it's Swift or Taylor at the top. I, I don't see much else. There's yeah. people that are high on Acres, but I don't. I haven't seen anywhere where he's anyone's running back one um, right now. So I agree with you. Another guy that I knew you were going to be high on um, is your running back three right now, which is Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He's my running back five. So still in the top five for me, like you said, the, our top five is the same. I think they're pretty much locked right now. I mean, all subject to change, but I think there's a clear line of demarcation after five, but what has you, what, what ugh, excuse me, why Clyde Edwards Hilaire over the likes of a Jonathan Taylor, who I have as my running back one. I'll I'll be honest, as you said to open it, I'm not a big college guy either like you, so this is very uh, preliminary. I did these rankings on Tuesday. We are recording now on Thursday. Uh, if I did it again today, I would actually put them five where you have them. I, I like Dobbins and Taylor a little more than him uh, the more I've looked into Edwards. So uh, he's, he's only three because of the day I did this. So I'm, I'm back. He's five. He's five with you. Okay. Down where he belongs. The reason I have him at five, 
Well, it's because, I mean, you were, we were talking about Joe Burrow and the quarterback, you know, portion of things where, you know, one season, one magical season. Well, yeah. pretty much what Edward Hilaire had. Um, got a decent amount of work in 2018 as a sophomore at LSU, but, you know, it was this past season as a junior where he rushed for 400 and, you know, 1,400 and, 1,414 yards, oddly enough, it's hard to say, 16 touchdowns, but it was the receiving 55 receptions for 453 yards and a touchdown. You, I know that's what you like to see. You know that's what I like to see. Get my running backs to receptions. You know, let's just tick away in this PPR world um, that, yep. that, that we live in these days. And, you know, as much as if anyone is – dinging Barrow for the offense, then you have to ding Hilaire as well because he was like the only ball carrier there. They had tons of receivers. Jesus Christ, I think three of them had double-digit receiving touchdowns um, this past season. But it also helped Edwards Hilaire a lot as well. But he, he is a dynamic back. Um, you know, he's a, he's a he's a pretty natural pass catcher. Um, Seems to have a decent low center of gravity, can bounce all, you know, absorb initial impact, all that contact balance shit that people talk about. Um, <laughs> but um, I just, I didn't see like, wow. I didn't see Cam Akers when I was watching. Correct. Edwards Hilaire. Um, I saw just a sound running back that I think will have probably round three, round four draft capital, which is good for a running back. I think he'll, you know, be in a timeshare, you know, I don't know that I necessarily ever see him as the true bell cow back in an offense. And then my buddy Ray GQ on Twitter put something out the other day. And this dude knows more about college football than, than you or I will ever know. And said that, that Edward Slayer is an absolute zero in pass protection. Now I, I yeah. hear that slightly tongue in cheek because anyone that's listened to this podcast for years, that was pretty much my, uh, my Aaron Jones, what the fuck does it matter uh, position when you probably do it three or four times a game, but it matters. I get it in the real NFL, but they, he really said this dude is a liability back there. Like he's going to get his quarterback killed if he's in there, which means that there's a possibility he's not in there on passing downs or less likely, which then would lessen his receiving opportunity. And then he would become yeah. a one or two down back, which I don't think is what maximizes his skill set. So I'm a little concerned. He's going to be a guy that um, he's not going to get much higher for me, but I think landing spot um, could ultimately knock him out of my top five. I, I don't disagree with any of that. Yeah. I would like to see him. Where did you know where Jay Gruden went? I can't remember uh, where he went. Is the yeah. OC. Oh, where did he, where did he go? Let's see. Jaguars. There, yeah, they they deflipped, deflipped out after one so season. I don't love that, like, because it would eat into uh, you know my right. my man crush's uh, workload possibly. But right. I think about those offenses that have always had guys who ran offenses that has always had a, a definitive passing down back like Chris Thompson. So like. If he went to Jacksonville and got the Chris Thompson role and was just that guy, which would oh, break my heart for my man Fournette. But I could I could see that being a spot where I would bump him up a little. Where a lot of people probably get scared off. They'd go, oh, shit, Fournette's there. He's buried as his backup. But Fournette's injury prone, and he's going into Jay Gruden offense, who likes to have a featured pass catcher out of the backfield. Yeah, and you know they would reunite LSU running backs. You know, yes, the past couple of years. And listen, I you know I love for that, but I, it's still, he did not deserve the receiving volume that he got last year. He How did shit, he did shit with it. It was literally just empty calories as they just continued to dump off to him in junk time because there wasn't anyone else to catch passes out of that backfield. I'm sorry, he just that's not a big part of his game he he can do in a pinch but Leonard Fournette should not have seen 100 targets last year Leonard Fournette should not have 100 targets combined for the rest of his NFL career sorry so Clyde Edwards Hilaire there I'd like it and truthfully this is year four for Leonard Fournette um not really I'm not I'm not a spot track cap guy I'm not really sure about contracts but I'm not I don't know that you want to pay him the fifth year option I think they've already when they did that weird shit where they voided part of his deal when he was acting like a shithead. Remember? 
There you go. So they're already working themselves away from him. This could be Leonard Fournette's last season in Jacksonville. Is kind of where I was going with that. Um, Possible. Churn and burn running backs world. One, sell Leonard Fournette if you have him in fantasy. Two, Clyde Edwards Lair goes there. That's probably one of the few spots I'd be like, oh, yep, I'm, I'm sneaky interested. Uh, and I think a lot of people will do the opposite, though. That's yeah. why I think it's like a sneaky, good landing spot. Because I think yeah. people be like, oh, he's buried again. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. You know, so we'll have, to, we'll have to keep that in mind. And we'll save we'll save Fournette for another day. I just think, John, you've gotten so far left on Leonard Fournette that I feel <laughs> obligated to start reining you back in. And it's sad because I love <sighs> That's Fournette fair. too. But come on. I mean, 100 targets. You know, Christ almighty. Just it was painful to, to watch him catch it and get tackled every single time. And I did nothing <laughs> after the catch. He might, he's, he's the Mike Evans of running backs after the catch. Looking at uh, the rest of our th- – this is kind of where my thing stopped. We get this top five, and then it's kind of a – I like a couple guys, then it's kind of a crapshoot after that. Uh, a couple of the big differences I see between us. I have A.J. Dillon at six. You have Zach Moss, not coincidentally. I have Zach Moss at 12. You have Dillon at 12. Uh, like I said, the last two days I've done a lot more research. I'm definitely a little too high on Dillon and too low on Zach Moss. Uh, so I do agree with that. Uh, one guy who I want to talk about, um, my number seven and your number 14, and this is going to be my favorite name to butcher this offseason, uh, LaMichael P. Ryan, who I am only going to refer to as Lamical because that's how his name is spelled. Uh, I, I like him. I mean, I, I, of course, have my big senior bull bump that I always have, but I, I liked him. Prior to that, the little bit that I did see of him in Florida, I thought he looked good at the Senior Bowl. No, again, safe. No big red flags with him, really. He's, a, I think he's a, a serviceable, decent pick, especially if you're, you know, beginning, middle of the third round in your fantasy draft. You could do a lot worse than a veteran guy who was productive for a questionable Florida team. Yeah, we, and I'll touch on a few of them. And, yeah, LaMichael Pirine had a, had a- – big senior bowl bump. I don't think he was on many people's radar. Um, and you're right. It does look like Lamical. So I'm, I'm impressed that you actually pronounce it right the, the first time. But my issue with him is his last name. It's not his first name. <laughs> uh, that's probably the unfortunateness of it <laughs> is that Samaje, uh, you know, hated that guy forever. So Burke I mean, would bump him at the top five yeah. bump for Burke. This guy's a must-have as far as Burke is concerned. I mean, he's probably great in a weight room. I mean, 5'11", 218, listed, productive, you know, five yards per carry in college, decent reception totals, touched 40 in his senior year, but only 6.6 yards per reception, which isn't too uh, impressive. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've heard a lot of positive things Um uh, about him, I think he's going to get drafted. And I think a lot of a role. I just he's just he's he's never going to see twelve t- ten to twelve touches a game as an NFL back, in my opinion, which is why he is where he is now. To the Zach Moss position of me, a five at six. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get on that train pretty quick, John, because we have uh, the same sensibilities in in the running backs that we like largely. And Zach Moss is a stout human being with just light feet, 5'10", 222, productive, uh, almost out of the gate at Utah. But he was four years there, which you don't like to see, um, in my opinion. I don't like any time a running back stays till his senior year. Um, You're just losing some of that upside in the pros. I think you've already played your first NFL season at the University of Utah in 2019. So um, less than ideal in my opinion, but um, he's a, he's a guy I can see and it don't throw around bell cow lightly because there's no such thing anymore outside of about four or five guys. Yeah. But he has traits that I like to see. Um, I loved his tape. I just really liked watching him play and that's where we're at right now it's that's how I'm, that's how i'm right guys <laughs> do do i like what i see on tape because that's what we have to work with right now and i like me some zach moss so he's he's in most people's top 10 so not, not stretch and you having him at 12 i don't think is an indictment on him um but if he tests well especially for his size 
Um, I think he's going to substantiate himself and, and agree you're going to end up moving him up. Now, the A.J. Dillon thing, I, I don't know what to tell you about because literally we have those two guys flip-flopped. And I'm just not, I'm just not buying that a player in the ilk of A.J. Dillon at 250 pounds is ever going to be anything as a running back in the NFL. I just – he just is – I want to say he's not athletic. I mean, because shit for six foot two fifty, he's far more athletic than I am, but not elusive uh, in, in what I watch. Just he's a run people over you know, type of guy. Yeah. I you don't see. I that. mean, there's a role for him. You wonder if he, not that he probably would even go there. And again, we our our routine. Uh, Patriots plug, but if he, you know, he, I could you see or going to Detroit? Could you see him going to Detroit or New England and just being Legarrette Blount? I was gonna say, what did you just Google? You know, bring up Legarrette Blount's prior profile page and name the teams he's played for his career. Thirty Eagles in there too. Yeah, no, I just go with the, the you know, uh, the the Patriots, Patriots coaching tree. Sure. Right? sure, he could be a serviceable yeah. role player. Forty carries and eighteen touchdowns. Yeah. I, it, it we've seen it, you know, it, it's happened once or twice in a lifetime, but it's just, I think he'll be a fullback. I mean, and, and the dude really can't even catch fat. Maybe, maybe he's a decent blocker and he can steal some touchdowns from people. Like I just, I, I can't get there. You know, kudos to him, decent college career, Boston college, but I, I want no part of AJ Dillon. I will own zero AJ Dillon. I don't give a shit what he does at the combine. <laughs> he's a guy that is. It's he's he will not find my top ten. Is there well, anybody else that you either really like or hate before we get out of the running backs? Yeah, I mean, I I like Keyshawn Vaughn, um, and I like Michael Warren. They're my seven and eight right now. I need to. Look more into him. You know, Benjamin, I placeholder at nine. I heard he showed up like senior, but like 20 pounds lighter than his stated Oof. college weight. He showed up like 195 and flat out said that he lost weight so he could test faster or test mm-hmm. better. That, that's not the right answer, you know. I mean, first things first, you need to be chugging water, you know, uh, after whatever you do, you know, to, to pack that weight back on. You sure should better do it before the combine. You need, we need to add some weight to this kid because. He he's not fast now, <laughs> and to have to drop weight to become that quote unquote fast player, that's a, that's just that's a huge red flag for me. Is I get it, it's an interview process. You kind of have to you have to cheat when you can. But this kid was listed at two ten uh, at Arizona State. I mean, that's fifteen pounds later. That's scat back territory. You know, yeah. That's 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 pass catching back, which he was decent. Eighty two college receptions in three seasons. You know. Not something I think is a plus tool in his arsenal, but he has the ability to do it. I'm just not a big Eno you know, Benjamin guy. It's funny because I know last year he was being touted as one of the one of the one of the backs to be. Yeah, huge yeah. 2020 draft. And again, don't do Debbie. So didn't follow him until now. Um, I was disappointed in what I saw personally. So he he's a guy that I'm not overly high on. There's a few guys that have sparked my interest recently. Uh, Rico Dowdle. Um, of South Carolina, go watch his tape. You'll like it. I, I can tell you, you'll like it. Supposedly he has just a bunch of off-field shit that he's not being talked about a lot. And then um, another guy, Scotty Phillips, uh, is a guy I like from Old Miss as well. He's a little shorter, um, not a bell cow either, but um, kind of gives me a Darwin Thompson type vibe when I watch him. Oh boy. One of my guys. Mm. Yeah, the one the one guy I like that uh, – I mean, people are talking about him. It's not like he's a sleeper. Uh, the Maryland guy, uh, Anthony McFarland. I, I think he's pretty good. And if he lands in the right spot, I, I could see him being fantasy relevant pretty early. I mean, not comparing him to anybody talent-wise. But, you know, th- think of the way Miles Sanders kind of came on throughout the la- year last year with Philly. I could see him doing that with another team where – you know, ahead of him, it's kind of a questionable depth chart. But as the year goes on, he gets a little more playing time and sees the field and becomes pretty fantasy relevant. I could see him being a sneaky guy to help teams in fantasy championship weeks for a guy you're getting probably in the third or fourth in fantasy drafts, unless he lands somewhere amazing. 
Yeah, I mean, I, and I know he was a name as a freshman. Uh, I mean, this this kid must have redshirted, I guess, because he's only he's only a sophomore. I guess he's a redshirt sophomore, so maybe he sat out a season. Um, again, don't do Debbie, don't know, but um, I remember the name. And you know, looking at me, I mean, decent. And yeah, a lot of people are talking about him. But listen, it's five nine, one ninety eight, a little too little, um, in my opinion. And didn't do a ton as a pass catcher either. And I think he's going to have to show that ability, you know, because I think he's a little too small to absorb the punishment as, as any type of significant running back. So I'm a little concerned about him. I think he's going to be a, a gadgety role player, probably more of an RB three on a team which is sadly my opinion. And I know a lot of people are high on him. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Again, you know, obviously this all changes in a couple of days here with the combine coming up. But well, yeah, before think- we move on, the one guy, Moria, you have to talk about because where you ranked him is why I even looked at his tape. And it's Darrington Evans of Appalachian State, which he already gets the, the school ding um, for me. But you had him just outside your top 12 as you're running back 13. I admittedly don't know a ton about him. Uh, just looking at kind of uh, consensus rankings from other writers and websites and everything, and they seem to higher than I did. I have not seen much of him, but have not seen much of anyone behind him. So he got the bump over uh, the guys I have under him just by looking at kind of uh, industry consensus. Fair enough. Yeah. Listen, John, you're nothing if you're not honest. Um, did I? Did you just change the running back rankings live on no. the air? No. So these no. names were all the names that were there before? Yeah. Okay. Well, you have Antonio Gibson as your running back 15. You're not allowed to do that because Antonio Gibson is listed as a wide receiver, John. And See, you're not he allowed would... to skirt the rules of the rankings. I was He's not on the list you were provided, and you still <laughs> added them in there because you want to be able to claim them, and you're not allowed to claim them. I looked on the Nine. wide receiver list and didn't see him. He is there, so you're going to have to update that until he officially changes his position because he should be a running back, but he is technically a, a wide receiver from the university. That's yeah, actually so, a guy I really like. Um, big fan. So let's go to those wide You, you know who Gibson reminds me of in a little bit? Uh our, our other man crush, Jalen Samuels. That's the very useful guy. Decent running back, decent receiver, play out of the slot, move him all around the field. He His tape, you, you're talking about some tapes. That's a guy who I actually have seen a little bit of, and uh, I'm pretty impressed. So, yeah, hopefully he does move to running back or lands on a team that's going to move, move him around quite a bit. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. Um it's just not like the Jalen Samuels who should have had more opportunity in Pittsburgh, especially this year. It's just land somewhere where people know how to get creative with you. you know, I'm yeah. not saying it has to be like the saints with like Taysom Hill and how they utilize him, oh, but Christ, this kid is just dynamic, you know, and he's, I don't think he's ever going to be a quote unquote running back, but he's a guy that should get running back touches. You know, it's like how mm-hmm. they Ebo Samuel, in San Fran. Like I just think the kid has some unique athletic ability that he's, he shouldn't be pigeonholed into one space. And I'm right there with you. His tape is, you know, it's exciting. You know, it, it gets, it gets a rise out of me. So, so to speak. So um, yeah, Antonio Gibson, who is my wide receiver 18 right now in our wide receiver rankings. And I would love to move him up more because I'm right there with you. I, I do like Antonio Gibson, but I'm not going to start from the bottom. We're going to start from the top and we're just going to, Check, check, check these because our top three is exactly identical um, and did not surprise me that much. C.D. Lamb, wide receiver one, who is everyone's wide receiver one. Jerry Judy, wide receiver two, who is everyone's wide receiver two. Judy, I thought I thought I was a little uh, odd putting Judy ahead of – or Lamb ahead of Judy. I thought Judy was everybody's one. No, nah, I think that ship sailed. Uh, really? Everything I've seen is C.D. Lamb, wide receiver one. Um, I don't know. Judy might be that one B type guy, but most I've seen and most I've listened to um, CD Lamb has taken the top spot um, this year. But the guy I wanted to talk about is our wide receiver three. And it is my Twitter avatar at present. I love this man. (laughs) It is LaVisca Chenault Jr. Why don't you tell me why you have, LaVisca Chenault as your wide receiver three. 
Yeah, I mean, similar to what I said earlier, I don't – there's a clear top tier in these wide receivers, and that's how I did the rankings th- this time around. I put them in tiers. So I had my tier one receivers, my tier two guys, and then I just ranked them in that tier. So he was somebody who I just, you know, from what I read, haven't seen a ton of tape on him, but – read, you know, I, I do tons of reading. So everything I read, lots of positives. That's just where he was slotted for me. Um, he, I honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if he does good at the combine. And of course, landing spots matter. He, he can absolutely move up into that one or two spot because I don't necessarily love Judy or Lamb, the couple guys behind Chanel that we'll get to. Uh, they could all leapfrog one and two, in my opinion. The, the the tier one in this class is pretty close to me. Fair enough. I mean, it, one and two are pretty much bulletproof, in my opinion. I mean, Lamb and Judy would have to fall on their face um, for me to move them. Um, even landing spot, I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to be a little bit uh, less impacted by landing spot because, listen, just you don't have to go far. You know, go back too far to AJ Brown, where everyone said, "Well." Oh, it was nice knowing you, AJ Brown, but you went to Tennessee and look what they did to Corey Davis. And then, AJ. but if they still had Mariota there, and they never went to, yeah, things uh, change. I think that's the point. Yeah, it was long enough there. to ruin Corey Davis's entire existence. But <laughs> all it did was make AJ Brown look like a rock star. Um, Lavisca Chanel, dude, I love Lavisca Chanel. He's just a bully. I mean, you're hearing a lot of Cordero Patterson. I think stylistically, I I can buy it, except. Uh, Chenault didn't return kicks in college, so we really see much of that. But I think the, a ball in their hands, you know, you see a 6'2", 220 guy, you know, touching the ball a decent amount of times as a, as a running back um, just kind of gives you those, you know, images um, of Patterson. And, listen, I mean, Patterson had a couple, you know, shining moments. I mean, I just think when Patterson went to the Patriots and they started using him as a running back, like it wasn't – he wasn't long for it, but shit, if – Someone did that out of the gate, with Patterson. Like when he was a Viking, who knows? A he looked career. fucking great, great. You know, and then just you know he's going to be able to catch passes out of the backfield. I mean, I'm saying Chenault should be used as a running back. He should not be. Um, but it, it was. It's just that that multiplicity you know, that people bring, and I think Chenault in a creative environment is certainly going to be someone I am interested in. Um, in, in these upcoming rookie drafts, I did read something recently and, you know, you gotta take everything with a grain of salt these days because a lot of negative gets put out there because teams are trying to devalue guys and try and knock them down so they can get them and snap. But I think there was something about it. Like he has some spinal condition, like spinal stenosis or something like that, which is terrifying, you know, when you're <laughs> like not good narrowing of the spinal column or it's something I'll have to look into it. I'm not, I'm not a doctor by any means, but I read it and I was like, ah, fuck really? <laughs> like, well, that was, that was fun while it lasted, but I'm, I'm not giving up. I'm going to let the medicals go through and see what comes back from, from the combine, but you not going to hang in that uh, wide receiver three for me um, until further notice. And then again, like you said, our, our four, three, six are actually the same gentleman as well, just in different orders. You have T Higgins, Jalen Rager, and Brian Edwards. I have Jalen Rager, Brian Edwards, and T Higgins. So almost the inverse. So we both like all of these guys, which is good, um, but they're totally different players. I mean, T Higgins and Jalen Rager, could just aesthetically yeah. going to be much different. Um, even production, you know, at its face, you know, couldn't have been much different. So what, what has you have T Higgins at four? Just kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I just like the system he's come out of. What is he? Clemson kid, right? If I'm not mistaken, the Clemson's produced quite a few high level NFL wide receivers the last few years, going back to Hopkins and, uh, you know, noodle footed Sammy Watkins. And, and, uh, I can't think of the other guy's name, Martavis Bryant before he smoked his way out of the league. So, you know, I put a lot of stock on that and people think I'm an idiot. However, uh, Clemson has produced quality NFL receivers. He's done nothing on the field to make me think he's not going to be good. So combining all that stuff and, 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 you know, kid is a good football player. He's probably going to be a 
first round pick or early second, um, unless the you know wide receivers completely fall off in this draft because it's deep. Um, so I, I think he lands in a good spot. He could end up at the with the Packers towards the end of the first. That's an amazing spot for him. Yeah, no argument here. T. Higgins, you know, six four two fifteen, like seems super just loose and athletic. You know, doesn't look like a six four guy out there. And yeah, you know, that's saying a lot. And he's also someone with a eighteen point six years breakout age, which is in the ninety six percentile. You know, just has a, checks a lot of boxes. You know, the production was there, like you said, even in his last season. You know, just shy of twelve hundred yards and thirteen touchdowns as a junior. You know, most of his career was um, with. Uh, why am I drawing a blank to the sunshine quarterback Lawrence Trevor Lawrence, who's coming out next year? I mean, he had the he had the pleasure of you know receiving passes from someone who most people said is a transcendent talent for the last two years. But yeah, I like T. Higgins as well. Um, just not as crazy about him as I am about Jalen Rager, um, and I just I I can't quit. Me some Jalen Rager, um, you know, talk about breakout age, this kid right there with T Higgins, 18.7 years of age, not as much college production because he went to TCU and he didn't go to Clemson. So he didn't get that terrible throwing him the ball surrounding. He had, he's, about, he's in the cam Akers situation, yeah, but at wide receiver, just about the worst possible scenario um, that, that you could get as far as college is concerned, but just dynamic. And I think, that you, you talk about safe dynamics going to be my word in this. And cause I think that is the NFL. Now it's you find dynamic players and you figure ways to get them the ball in space. And I don't know that there's a better player in this draft. Um, you know, that, you know, as far as being dynamic uh, is concerned, he's, he's special to me and I hope he's not smaller than he's listed. Cause you always assume a little bit in college and he's listed at 5'11, 195. So if he comes in at 5'10, 180 something. I mean, we're we're gonna be at, we're gonna have the Hollywood Brown issue all over again. And it's you know, is this guy really built for the NFL? Like sure looks it. You know, he doesn't carry him himself like Hollywood Brown, so I don't want to give him the 160 pounds kiss of death, but he's a smaller guy. He's nothing like T. Higgins. So I'm just on Rager. I think he's going to have draft capital as well because you can use him in multiple facets. And I think T. Higgins is probably just an X receiver. And we didn't even talk about Brian Edwards. Brian Edwards is a senior that I thought was coming out last year. Yeah. Uh, I don't, don't know why he didn't. Um, you know. Maybe it's because uh, Debo Samuel <laughs> stole his spot. <laughs> but he's another guy. You know, this this whole four, five, six group that we had mentioned, what do they all have in common? Super young breakout ages. And Edwards produced with Debo on the field. So he's been able he, – he's shown he can still be a productive receiver with another productive receiver on the field, which I, I think speaks volumes about his ability – to go to any team in the NFL and be their number two or number three is, you know, rookie year, second year in the league and still bring some fantasy value because he's been able to do it in college. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about breakout age. This guy defines it. He was 17.8. He broke out. That's the hundredth percentile. College dominator rated 48.4 94th percentile. I mean, yeah. From a metrics perspective, I love him. This guy is a box checker, and he's also 6'3", 215. So he's got the size. You know, his combine is probably going to elevate his stock, if anything else. I don't see a fast guy when when I watch the tape, but I don't think he's going to be like – hurts his stock slow. I don't think he's going to run in the you know the four sixes, you know, plus. I, I think he's going to probably live in those four fives, and that will be good enough. So if there are other agility – uh, metrics are decent. You know, he's a guy that's probably going to lock himself right into that, you know, yeah, and spot for me. Totally different receiver, but, you know, just th- thinking of him with, with Debo, you know what I mean? Debo's not he, – he, he's a bit of a bully, obviously. He's a bigger guy, but he's not a burner. He doesn't do anything especially well. He's just a good wide receiver, and I feel like that's kind of where Edwards is. I think he's not – not flashy people aren't going to rant and rave about his route running or you know his 
body control in the air and all that other shit people love to talk about this time of year. But he's just good at being a wide receiver. And I, I think it's going to translate to the NFL. He's yeah, he's one of my favorites in this class. Yeah. And, and well, he should be, um, you know, he, he's a guy that I don't think, I, I think his, you know, his height train kind of passed by because most people assumed he was coming out as a junior. So yeah, you know, correct. Like, oh, okay. Oh shit. Brian Edwards is in this class too. Like, okay, well, let's, let's find a place to put him around all these other awesome younger receivers. Like, um, lost in a sauce a little bit. So I'm um, glad that we both found cause to have him in our top six uh, right now. It uh, does my heart good. Jump on the hater train here a little bit. I see I have Henry Ruggs at eight. You have him at seven. And lots of people have him up around number three. Why do you have him, relatively speaking, so low? Yeah, um, that's the Christopher Beam bias right there um it's just he never broke out in college and that has enough of a track record of consistency to scare me off of even considering this guy in the top five he looks like he to me in what i've seen is going to be a much better nfl receiver than fantasy receiver that's all i care about here i mean he's super fucking fast he's going to run into four threes so that's not going to move him up my draft board at all you know he he had some splash plays in in college but it just it, it it he didn't do anything to ever say well he's the he's the outlier you know of these metrics you know and no, he didn't break out because of this, and that's okay. You know, it just it just seems like a good, fast wide receiver. And there is a ton of them in the NFL that I do not want on my fantasy team. Like Ted Ginn has been good and fast for like 10 years in the NFL. And I wasn't upset that I missed him in my rookie drafts. Like that's a pretty good comp. You know, Deshaun Jackson <laughs> well, not for him. a year or two of, of premium production. But you have to hit on those splash yeah. plays. Like, sure, Tyreek Hill constantly hits on the splash plays, and he kind of just, you know, breaks the rules. But he's, Yeah, he's a fucking unicorn. Yeah, that's the exception. That's not the rule. And I'm not going to paint rugs with that brush, but it just it, – there's not enough. He's, it's not – he's not rounded enough for me to even put him in my top five. I mean, I, I think I was pretty – I'm pretty comfortable with him being my seven. And honestly, I probably would look in a different direction if I'm on the clock and the top six receivers are gone and he's seven. I'm not taking him. Yeah, I'm probably looking at running back. Uh, Unless he becomes such a screaming value, uh, he is, he's kind of on my no thank you list. Yeah, he's in a, he's, he's in a, like I said, there's nothing he can do at the combine that's going to help where I have him <laughs> ranked. Nope. And where no, I, agree. Ends, I don't think is going to help where I have him ranked because I, I think he serves a tremendous purpose in the NFL. I think teams are going to love him, you know, some, some enough teams that he's going to get capital. I mean, sure. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes in the first round. I don't think he should, but he will definitely go in the second round. I mean, you just, you don't pass up on that kind of speed you know, in today's NFL. So he's yeah. going. You know, what, you know what he's got written all over him? That guy's got a fucking, that guy's a raider. Sure. Like they, they always love these fucking fast guys. That, that's where he's going to go. Yeah, and, and, that, and, and, and that would bump him down. You want him to fucking catch balls from Derek Carr? I, I don't. No, yeah, well, I don't think Derek Carr is long for the desert, you know, from what it sounds uh, like. Yeah, you know, okay. pretty rumblings that they're offering Brady two and sixty, which I don't think he takes because he's not going to go to Raiders no. to finish his NFL career anywhere. I think he goes to the Chargers um, uh, out in L.A. But truthfully, I still think he ends up a Patriot if I had to put money on it. But yeah, I, I'm not. I, yeah, I don't want Rugs. You know, Rugs the Raider with Carr under center. I mean, we saw Tyrell Williams, who's a kind of one dimensional field stretcher as well, and. That's full hit or miss, you know, in that offense. You're right. There's there's really only negative landing spots um, for him. At yeah. And so, yeah, that's I'm comfortable with it. Um, you had Van Jefferson way higher than I did. Um, I have him down at 17. You have him at seven above rugs. Um, I I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to get there with you. I like Jefferson. You know, I'm he checks. He is the the John Debari class favorite. He checks all my boxes. Senior Bowl guy. Check. Great route runner. Check. Coach's son. Check. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
I have him. What I have overall twelfth in this class. He's also. I'm gonna I'm gonna get him everywhere because he's gonna be the screaming value on my board. All right. Um, I don't hate him. I, I'm not gonna forget you. You're right. He, you know he. Yeah. We, he, he seems like a fine, upstanding young gentleman. Um, he's also going to be 24 years old uh, this coming season, which I don't know. With a 22.1 years breakout age. Um, we we're just talking about how awesome these young breakout guys are. This guy's the opposite. Um, ultimately, he was uh, at Ole Miss, and he was fighting with the likes of the aforementioned A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. Um, and the rest for opportunity early on, um, went to Florida, you know, in 2018 and had, by all accounts, a decent, you know, career in Florida, nothing earth shattering, but I don't know. I'm just, he, he's going to have to blow me away metrically. Um, you know, as far as testing is concerned for yeah. me to, to, to probably own him anywhere. He, he's going to be a John Debar guy, six two one ninety seven as well. I don't, I don't like that frame. That's a little too small um, for my opinion, but you know, I've been wrong before and you've found a number of these guys. So I'll keep an eye on him, but I don't think he deserves to be anywhere near the top 10. Yeah. Uh, might be now Justin Jefferson, who is my wide receiver eight. I think if I'm going to take a, you know, tall skinny kid uh it's going to be the one who just put up a 1500 yard 18 touchdown season at lsu yeah. uh, that's that's production i mean that's where that that's the jefferson <laughs> that's the jefferson i want on, on my team so you have him at nine so it's not you're way off on him but you know as far as body types are concerned i mean these two are pretty different other than that but um, i'm more of a justin jefferson than van jefferson guy another one that i want to just bring your attention a little bit is you need to look into Donovan Peoples Jones a little bit. Um, look, I'm a Michigan fan and I want to put him higher. And uh, again, my, my personal biases are jumping in here as a Michigan fan and giving my heart broken since uh, fucking Desmond Howard did nothing in the NFL uh, going to Braylon Edwards, to all these other guys who I was like, yes, I, I, it, I just, this is a, a safe ranking to not break my heart. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, listen, he's got a seventeen. Where I have Van Jefferson, I have Peoples Jones up at nine. I just, I think better days are ahead for him. Um, I, I, I like Michigan as well, but not to your degree. And college teams cannot break my heart, so um, I, I'm okay with the the Wolverines, but you know, this dude was a punt returner in college as well. That that's something I like to see is that teams want to get the ball, you know, in, in these type of players' hands because he didn't get the volume as a receiver um that I would yeah. like to see. But um he was productive enough um and he was highly rated, I if I recall correctly. Um as a uh, yeah uh, correct you know, highly rated prospect. So I'm gonna I'm gonna earn a side of He's better than Michigan allowed him to be, and a combine's going to show it. So that's why I have him there. And then, you know, again, we can't go through all these, but I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about your wide receiver 12, currently my wide receiver 24, and that's none other than Antonio Gandy-Golden. Go ahead. The floor is your show. Uh, Small school guy coming from Liberty, another senior bowl guy, and that always – I tend to have my seniors a little higher than most. Um, got rave reviews his week down in Alabama. Uh, listen to a, reading a lot of stuff that I read, listen to NFL network when they have the, the GMs and coaches and other people coming in. He, nobody had a bad thing to say about him that week down at the senior bowl. And I, I always think that makes a big difference come draft day. We've seen in the past where guys kind of have a nice week down there and th- it translates to, translates to draft capital oftentimes. So he, you know, he's another guy. He goes to the combine shits the bed. I have no problem bumping him out of my top (laughs) 24. No problem. But right now, based on what I heard from coaches and the reports from him down there every couple of years, you know, one of these smaller school guys sneaks in. This class is pretty top heavy. So he's not going to crack this, you know, top, top six, top seven, top eight. Um, but, but he's a guy not comparing him to Cooper cup, but you know, the, every year there's a one or two of these smaller school guys who get drafted and, and end up 
end up panning out, and he's somebody I have targeted in this class. All right, fair enough. Um, I thought at some point you were going to reference Kenny Galladay, um, but you didn't, so I'm proud of you for not <laughs> doing that. Um, yeah, the kid's big, 6'4", 222, 32 and a quarter inch arms, played at Liberty, dominated a bunch of bank tellers. Um, and but that's I mean that's one of the good things though too. A lot of these guys, <laughs> bank tellers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was so good, uh, but he. That's what you need to see from these guys. You know what I mean? The the kids that end up coming out of these small schools, they need to be able to crush the guys they're playing against. Yeah, agreed. I mean, in a decent breakout age, 19.4 years old, 81st percentile, 75th percentile yards per reception, 16.6 was decent for a guy his size, 40.5% dominator, 80%. All solid numbers for him, but you're right. They they damn well better be, or he wouldn't even have been yeah. invited to the senior bowl. You know, it's, um, I'm going to be very interested to see how he looks in Indy. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Peers, because I don't know. I he's. I think I'm almost just. I'm probably going too far one way on him because of the small school bias and the fact that that does matter to me. I mean, there's outliers to every scenario. I mean, we were just mm-hmm. talking about, um, you know, breakout agent Henry Ruggs. I mean, there's outliers. I mean, there's people that hit. Um, you know, Terry McLaurin hit last year and never broke out. You know, and he looks like the real deal. Um, and I know it was one of your guys, but no, then there's just so many of these guys that, you know, Ashton Dolan from last year that everyone couldn't get enough about and yeah. like dominated small school competition. That dude's never going to play meaningful snaps. In the NFL. Like it's just, there's so many more of the, Hey, do you remember Antonio Gandy golden? Who? I don't remember <laughs> that guy. You know, then there is exactly. Antonio Gandy golden fucking fantasy viable wide receiver. Like it's just, he needs to he needs to really prove it to me and what he did at Liberty didn't prove shit to me. Just it's unfortunate. It's you know, that's what he had to work with, and that's good. Now you're now you're competing on a larger stage. Let me see what you look like here. And then let me see what the NFL thinks about you as well. You know, with draft capital. I mean, remember everyone was talking about how early Terry McLaurin was gonna go in the draft, right? People were mocking him in the first round, you know, the draft because of how well he did at the senior bowl and how how nice he was and how he tested and, and all this other shit. What did he go? In the third, fourth round? Uh, third. Terry McLaurin, third round? Yeah, I mean, that's that's even what the NFL thought about. He 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 exceeded expectation, but he also played at Ohio State. You know, but all the wide receivers kind of fell last year because it was a deep class also. So I wouldn't be shocked to see a lot of these guys. I mean, you know, Metcalf was what, last pick of the second? So, yeah, and I'm just depending playing. Depending on how, it, you know, if, if they start going early, whatever. 10, 10, 11, pick 10 and 11, go wide receiver back to back. It's like a fantasy draft, you know, it can create a run on the position and all these guys get bumped up or if everybody kind of holds their cards close to their chest and the wide receivers fall to the end of the first, it's going to push a lot of guys who might be second round picks into the third and the third round guys to day three. Yeah, true. very true. Yeah, like just uh, as we said, this is all going to change. Um one, one more guy I love. I see. Is, I uh, yes, my Tyler Johnson. I have him at mm-hmm. ten. You have him at eleven. He was somebody a lot of people I think expected to come out last year, similar to Brian Edwards, and he stayed in school, had another really good productive year. But he, with like you had mentioned earlier, with all these younger guys coming out, these handful of seniors that people liked last year, two years ago, there, there's seeming to be falling, I think, a little more than they should because Tyler Johnson is a good wide receiver. So is Brian Edwards. These are guys who should be on people's radar. And to me, it seems like they're kind of off the grid right now, which is, I mean, for us, it's fantastic as fantasy owners. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I I probably higher on Tyler Johnson than my ranking indicates, and I probably need to fix that because I like Tyler Johnson. Um, as well. I mean, 19 years old breakout age, 90th percentile, 17.3 yards per reception, 82nd percentile, 57.2 college dominator rated, 98th percentile. And this dude was bad on Rashad Bateman, who most people are going to have as one of the top receivers next year. Um, 
uh, in the draft. So I, I'm I'm there with you. I, I'm a huge Tyler Johnson guy. I'm a huge Brian Edwards guy. Um, hopefully their value is depressed because they went back to college. I, I, I and we will likely never know why they made that decision. Um, maybe they wanted to graduate. Maybe that was more important to them, more power to him. But um, I think he probably would have been in my top five or six last year's draft um, had he come out. So you can't really fall to 12 because you went back and had another productive college season. I mean, you are older than most of you play against. I think late production isn't as valuable as early production. Um, but, you know, there was early enough production um, from Tyler Jones. Like I said, he broke out at 19 years old. He had a tremendous junior season on the record. So it wasn't like he just hit in his 20, age 21 season in Minnesota. So I'm with you. Um, Tyler Johnson will probably be inside my top 10 when it's all said and done. So here's a, here's a, fictional made up trade for you let's say you have uh the fifth pick <clears throat> in the first round i was gonna say chanel but you expressed your love for him so i'll pivot down one and uh you need wide receiver uh jalen rager's on the board for you but you have a trade offer to move back let's say what did i say you have the fifth pick let's say someone's offering you eight and 201 and you know with those picks that you can get brian edwards and tyler johnson would you trade back and throw the two darts on them instead of the one on Rieger. Yeah, I think that's just probably uh, a better process. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. It would hurt to lose out on Rieger, but, you know, one of those two, I think, will be a, at worst, wide receiver two for a decent yeah. period of their NFL career. Likely both of them, with both having low-end probably wide receiver one ups. I don't think either of those guys are ever going to be, you know, you know, scratching the upper echelon of receivers. Sure. Could, could they live in the 16 to 24 range for a couple of years? I think they can, you know, and you know, I don't think Rager's is going to be wide receiver one either. I don't think that's, that's in his range of outcomes. So yeah, it's probably a trade I would make all things being equal. Like you said, if I know I'm landing those two guys moving back, which we never know, but there's enough value that those guys theoretically yeah. should be hanging around there um, at those picks. So yeah, I would do it. And I know you would too. <laughs> oh, I love trading down <laughs> all day, every day. Darts, baby darts. All right. We are going far too long. We haven't talked about tight ends, which is good because this class sucks. <laughs> and you thought it sucked soup to nuts. I mean, I'm, I'm not blown away by any of these guys. And that hurts, you know, as I deem myself, you know, the, the tight end maker. Or, you know, I'll come up with something cooler than that when time comes. But I know tight ends, guys. And uh, ugh, not, uh, not, not happy. I will no. not be drafting any of these guys, you know, except in a tight end premium league. And probably still not going to take most of them because – That'll push them up enough for other people. So we're not going to belabor the point here. We'll, we'll touch quickly. We'll go through one through five each because they are very different. And I think that kind of goes to the value of this class. John, you have Adam Troutman, of course, senior bowl. Cole Komet, Albert <laughs> Okwo, I, Okwo Gabunum. Okwo Gabunum. Yeah, I'm not trying to insult the man. I've all, only always called him Albert O. Um, Harrison Bryant and then Bryson Hopkins round out your top five. My number one is not even in your top five right now. Um, and that is Hunter Bryant followed by Harrison Bryant. That's going to confuse far too many people as we go through this process. Cole Komet, Adam Troutman is four and then Albert O is my five. Is out Al, is Adam Troutman your one strictly because of your aforementioned senior bias? I've seen the most of him than anyone else in this group. Uh, and I think he is a strong blocker, which is going to get him on the field more often earlier than a lot of these other guys. So that is my big uh, thing with him. He's a good blocker. And I think that will allow him to see the field more than uh, some of the other guys in this class. Which is fair enough, and I've heard nothing but glowing things about the kid as well, which is why he is in my top five on on other people's opinions alone. Um, Hunter Bryant is one of these guys that I say is a tight end by designation only, so why not take advantage of it? He's 6'2", 239. He is the move tight end. You know, I see shades of Evan Ingram um, in him and his career at Washington. 
you know, 16.4 yards for reception on 85 catches, not a big TD guy, but an explosive guy um, that I think will play in today's NFL. Um, I like getting guys that aren't tied to the line all day long. I understand what you're saying about getting on the field early. That's why I was so huge on TJ Hawkinson last year over the likes of Noah Fant, but that didn't really pan out in year one, just because you're a good block and get on the field. If, they're not letting you do anything else. So I went with the guy that I think has the best opportunity to catch the football uh, in his first year. So that's why I'm with Hunter Bryant. But he's another guy that I recently heard has some injury issues um, in his past. So I'll have to dig a little deeper into that. Um, anyone else you wanted to talk about in that top five? Uh, that Albert, Albert, our friend Albert O there, he uh, he's a pretty boomer bust guy. The one red flag I've heard with him is effort, which I fucking hate to hear that. Um, but but if he gives it a go, I wouldn't be shocked if he comes out of this as a pretty decent fantasy relevant tight end. He's pretty good. But yeah, if he's out there half assing it, he's gonna get fucking buried. He's either gonna be, you know, five years from now, he's either gonna be tight end one from this class or <laughs> what did you say it was uh bank teller? <laughs> bank teller. Yeah, so his he has I would say among the tight ends, he is the high floor, high ceiling guy combined into one. Yeah, I, no argument. He was the name that you know everyone was talking about a year ago. Is like the surefire tight end one, you know, in, in this class, and he's just kind of seemed to regress. I mean, the kid had eleven touchdowns as a freshman at Missouri on only twenty nine receptions. I mean, that's. That's a way to introduce yourself. And then, you know, similar large with six touchdowns the next year, then only 306 yards, you know, in the following year with six touchdowns. I mean, he regressed since he was a yeah. freshman. And you saying that you're hearing a knock on him as effort. I mean, it, yeah, did he not think he had to try? Did he not think, you know, he, he had to put the work in, you know, yeah. so speak and stuff that it was just going to come natural to him because – that's not how this works, you know, and we, we, we can, we can talk about countless guys that were athletic and didn't want to put the work in that never made it in the NFL. And that would be unfortunate because he uh, seems like he has potential, you know, and it's like that uh, Geico commercial, right? With the, 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 uh, what's it called? Pinocchio. You have potential. You have potential. You have potential. Like it's a, uh, Albert O's nose is just growing by the day. So I hope you're right. And he puts his best foot forward because this class could look even worse if he continues to to bomb out of it from a tight end position. The only other one to touch on here, Bryson Hopkins out of Purdue. I have him five. You have him six. Uh, I've seen several people have him as number one. So he'll probably climb up both our boards if he looks good at the combine and lands in a good draft spot. But – that that should wrap up this trash position. <laughs> yeah, he's another guy that, you know, I box score scouted real quick because I saw people had him ranked. I haven't really looked at any of his tape, but see, decent production. You know, another guy with 15 yards per receiving average, 16 touchdowns in four seasons, including a red shirt at Purdue. So he's a, he's a super senior now, um, which doesn't, doesn't mean as much to me for tight ends because yeah. these guys take a few years, which isn't the best thing. So maybe just a year further along, but they also play you know, further into their careers. They can be productive into their thirties. Um, he is already going, he's almost 23 years old at present. So little older uh, to the game, but um, interesting enough, you know, he's a guy I want to see what, what he does at the combine as well. And what, what the takeaway is for him. But that wraps up the shitty tight end position. We did the top 40 and John's the only one that did his homework and actually ran through what he considered his top 40. I didn't. So there's no comparison, but I'm just going to go one through 10 of what John's first round would look like um, in a one QB draft. Um, if he was picking every player and it's DeAndre Swift, CD Lamb, Jerry Judy, LaVisca Chenault, T Higgins, Cam Akers, Jalen Rager, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Brian Edwards, Jonathan Taylor, J.K. Dobbins. Well, I, I went further because I wanted to get to J.K. Dobbins. And then 12, we'll say Van Jefferson. So we're in a 12-team league here. Um, probably disagree with a little bit of that order, but, yeah, by and large, that's probably short of Van Jefferson. I, I, just about every one of those guys would be um, a first-round pick for me as well. So uh be interesting to see what this looks like uh, a month from now, John. But anything else do you have Radically to say? Radically different. 
on this pre-combrine Fantasy 40 Rookie Talk podcast? No, this is uh, the best time of the year, so I'm pretty excited. And uh, like I said, a lot of people kind of cement their, you know, this is, these are my pre-combine guys. And post-combine, not much changes. Post-draft, not much changes. I uh, I enjoy this process because I don't mind throwing my list right in the fucking trash and starting over. And I, I know a lot of people are like, ooh, that's crazy. But I, I, I mean, you get new information and it changes things. Agreed. And I think that's the, the beauty of, of these conversations and kind of the process that we have in place is that we're, we're open to change. Just, you know, and you above all are, this is how I feel today. And I reserve the right to change every piece of it as new information comes um, available. So, you know, what it looks like at the beginning to the end is staggeringly different. And that's not a bad thing. You know, it just shows that we're not fixed in our opinions either. That just because we might like a guy early, yeah. If we get enough reason not to like them late, you know, we're telling you how we actually feel uh, about players. And with that yeah. sombering moment, you know, we will end this Andrew Berkless podcast. We miss you, buddy. Can't wait to get you back. I want to thank our sponsors over at Full Time Fantasy Network. Go check them out. Ton of great podcasts going on over there. We are on the eve of the combine. As John said, we're recording a Thursday before the combine. The actual drills are one week from today, which is fantasy, you know, dynasty offseason is going to go into full swing. At that point in time, we will have a post combine. Uh, episode. We'll certainly have a post NFL draft episode and we'll start diving more into the offseason content as these weeks progress. So, again, thank you, John, Andrew Burke. We miss you. And with that, we are. <laughs>